If you want to see very intact World War II German fortifications of the types used on the Atlantic Wall, you should look no further than the Channel Islands, the most heavily fortified sector of that famous western coastal defence. The reason for such heavy fortification was simple. The Channel Islands were the only piece of Britain that the Germans captured and occupied during World War II, and Hitler was so determined for propaganda reasons to hang on to the islands that he ordered the diversion of huge amounts of building materials, labourers and artillery pieces to them to ensure that the British could never take them back. Even after the Atlantic Wall had been breached following the June 1944 D-Day landings in Normandy and the subsequent conquest of Brittany, Hitler ordered the islands to be held, a task that occupied an entire German infantry division of almost 26,000 men, an equipment that could have been better employed in the Battle of France and later, of course, Germany itself. In fact, the four islands of Jersey, Guernsey, Alderney and Sark remained under German occupation for days after the main German surrender on the 8th of May 1945. British ships sailed from England to bring freedom to the Channel Islands. Off the coast, the destroyer Bulldog anchored near to the German minesweeper, from which came a representative of the German command. Major General Heiner was instructed that only unconditional surrender would be accepted. Within a few minutes, he signed. The German flag is removed. The British white ensign flies in its place. After nearly five years of occupation, the Channel Islands are free. The last German garrison on Alderney not surrendering until the 16th of May. If you visit the many surviving gun batteries dotted around the islands, you won't see many actual guns. The casemates and open emplacements are largely empty. This is because the British Army engaged in a huge post-war clean-up operation to make the islands fit again for civilian habitation and to encourage the return of tourism. The German garrison surrendered their supplies and firearms. The bunkers were stripped of fixtures and fittings, German prisoners doing a lot of the work, and the minefields and barbed wire entanglements were removed. But the big guns posed a bit of a logistical problem. Smaller anti-tank and anti-aircraft guns were taken off the islands and scrapped, but the anti-shipping pieces were very heavy and difficult to handle. On the island of Jersey, for example, the British Army captured 415 artillery weapons of all calibres, with 61 being of large calibre, ranging from 8.8 .8 to 22 centimetres. A whole range of weapons were found mounted. For example, battery Moltke, which is today almost intact, had four captured French Canon de 155mm GPF, known in German service as the K418F, mounted in open positions. At Battery Lothringen, four 15cm SKL45 naval guns were installed, old Krupp guns from World War I. In total, as I mentioned, some 61 heavy artillery pieces were captured on Jersey. None of the guns was of any interest to the Allies. Plenty of examples were captured all over Europe, and they amounted to so much scrap. The Allies had absolutely no use for them. In fact, organising their transport off Jersey was seen as a complete waste of time and money. Battery Moltke sits atop steep cliffs in the northwest of Jersey, and the British decided to concentrate captured German heavy guns at Moltke, and then heave them over the cliffs into the wild sea far below, ensuring that they could never be used again. To us today, such an act seems like vandalism or gross stupidity, but all over the world the victorious allies were using the ocean as a dumping ground for Axis weapons and equipment. It is actually fortunate for history that the British threw the guns over the cliffs in 1946 rather than scrapping them, for they all still exist at the foot of the cliffs. The cliffs are very dangerous and difficult to climb down, and moving the guns has proved extremely difficult as well. In fact, in the 1990s, several of these now very rare guns were salvaged in difficult operations involving helicopters and placed back in the batteries where they once sat. 
At Battery Moltke today, the 15.5 cm K418F has been restored to a gun carriage and placed back to its original firing position, repainted in its original German camouflage scheme. Two more guns lie unrestored in another firing position, a 21cm Mörser 18 and an ex-French 22cm K532F. At Batterie Lothringen, one of the four 15cm SKL45s was recovered in 1992 from the foot of the cliffs and installed into its old position by an RAF Chinook helicopter in 1998 as part of a Territorial Army exercise. The rest of the guns still lie at the foot of the cliffs, easily identifiable and awaiting recovery for display. One of the last intact dumps of World War II German artillery pieces left in the world, and an evocative reminder of the German occupation of a tiny slice of Britain eight decades ago. Many thanks for watching, please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon, details in the description box below.